All right, guys, welcome to this page of the notes. We're now going to take a look at method number four for solving a quadratic equation using algebra. This is known as general factoring, general trinomials. Uh, this is definitely the trickiest of the methods that we've looked at. So if GCF doesn't work and difference of squares doesn't work and it's not a perfect square trinomial, unfortunately, you're left with no choice. You've got to go option number four, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at it. Now, again, this should be review from Algebra 1, but I'm going to run through all of it with you anyway, because like I said, it is a little tricky. And I do have a slight typo in here. Um, I've said that we're going to find two values, M and P. Actually, I prefer to use M and N, and here's the reason why. Um, I've already used P. If you remember back to the beginning of these notes, the first pages, um, we wrote a quadratic in standard form having been given the roots. And we called the roots P and Q, right? In that formula, X minus P times X minus Q is equal to zero and you foil it out. Go back and check out video number one if you forget. Um, but the, I've already used P. So I don't want to use it again. Instead, we're going to find two numbers, M and N. All right, so anywhere here where I have a, uh, anywhere here where I've got that P, let's just go ahead and replace that guy with an N. I will use M and N instead. M and N, M and N, right? So we're looking for two numbers, M and N. Now, here's the way it works. Uh, real quick note about this. You may have learned there are, there are several different ways to factor a general trinomial, several different ways. You may have learned a method um, where you do something like this. Um, you guys set up a, a square, and then you make boxes inside of the square. Right? Um, so maybe you learned uh, this method. Um, you may have learned the method where you set up the x, right? Uh, and you use this x to figure out your numbers m and n. Um, I do not use these methods, uh, and I'll tell you the reason why. Um, because you are going to have several options, right? There are many choices to choose from. And you sort of have to systematically work your way through all of the options. And both of these methods only allow you to visually see one option at a time. Right? Now, for most kids, that's no big deal, and they really like sort of setting it up this way. And, and if that's you, if you've learned one of these methods from a previous teacher, Algebra 1 teacher, or something like that, fantastic. Please keep using it. But I want you to know why I set up a table instead. And the reason that I'm going to set up a table is because it allows me to look at all of my options at the same time. And, and I'd like to be able to see everything I'm working with instead of just one of my options at a time. But again, you guys know I don't like working through example problems that have already been done. So please feel free to come back and check this out. But I want to do one with you um, that we have to work through together. So here we go. On the next page of the notes, we're going to go ahead and factor this guy. Now, here's what we're going to do. Remember my four methods. GCF comes first. That is the easiest method. I'm going to start there. A GCF between 4x squared minus 12x and 9. Well, first look for a constant. What can I pull out of a 4, a 12, and a 9? Well, the 4 and the 12 have a 4 in common, but I can't pull a 4 out of a 9 evenly, right? 12 and 9 have a 3 in common, but I can't pull a 3 out of a 4 evenly. So I don't have any constants that are in GCF. What about a variable? This has an x squared and this has an x. So I could pull an x out of both of those, but the, the 9 doesn't have an x. And so I don't have a GCF for all three terms. So GCF is out. Option number two, difference of squares. All you got to do is look at it. You can easily tell that this is not a difference of squares. Remember, difference of squares is only two terms, and those two terms are subtracted. I have three terms. I have a 4x squared, a minus 12x, and a 9. So this definitely is not difference of squares. Option number three, perfect square trinomial. Well, let's check and see. 
Remember the way perfect square trinomial worked? I need to figure out how do I get a 4x squared? Well, I can do that by doing a 2x and squaring it. How do I get a 9? Well, that comes from 3. Squared. This is a minus sign, so I need a negative sign here. I need the middle to be 2 times a, which is a 2x, right, times uh, 3. And here's what we get. 2 times 3 would be 6, and 6 times 2 would be 12x, and so I wind up getting a negative 12x here. This is a perfect square trinomial, um, and you absolutely could factor it you do that way, right? I would wind up with a 2x minus 3 squared, and we actually did this one on the previous page of the notes. But what we want to do is take a look at this new method, option number 4, for factoring a general trinomial, which will also work for this one. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that would work, and no, we should wind up with this as our answer. So here we go, just to prove to you that this method for factoring general trinomials does work. We now know what we're trying to get to. We're trying to get to that 2x minus 3. So let's see how this goes. What we're going to do is when the leading coefficient is not 1, remember the general form is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. What you're going to do is you're going to set up a table. Now, in that table, I am looking for two numbers which we call m and n. On the first side of the table, I'm going to multiply m and n together. m times n needs to be equal to a times c, which for me would be a, 4, c, which is 9, 4 times 9 would be 36. So I'm looking for two numbers, m and n, sorry, that should be an equal sign. I'm looking for two numbers, m and n, that when I multiply them together, I get 36. And guys, there's a whole bunch of options. Let's go ahead and list them out. I could do 1 times 36. I could do a negative 1 times a negative 36. Uh, I could do 3 times 12. I could do a negative 3 times a negative 12. Uh, let's see, I could do 4 times 9. I could do a negative 4 times a negative 9. And I think I got one more option here. I could do 6 times 6, or I could do a negative 6 times a negative 6. Now again, the reason that I like this table method over the other methods is this. I have now listed out all of my possible options. This is all of them, right? These are the only ways to get to 36. These are all of the factors of 36. If you did any of those other methods, setting up the squares or setting up the x, you could only test one of these at a time, right? You sort of have to keep track of which ones you've already used and which ones you haven't used as you go through that method. By setting up a table, I don't have to worry about that. They're all listed right here. I can visually see all of my options. But I still have a problem, right? I'm looking for two numbers, m and n, that multiply to 36. And ah, I've got a lot of options. How do I know which one is the right one? Well, the second part of this is that m and n must sum together, meaning I need those same two numbers, m and n, right, m and n here, m and n here, same numbers, but now they have to add together. They must sum to give me b, which for us is a negative 12. 
So now what I do is I make my way down through my options until I find the one that when I add together gives me a negative 12. Well, here we go. 1 plus 36? Nope, that's 37. Negative 1 plus negative 36? Nope, that's minus 37. 3 plus 12? Nope, that's 15. Negative 3 plus negative 12? That's a negative 15. Uh, 4 plus 9 would be 13. Negative 4 plus a negative 9 would be a minus 13, right? I'm getting closer, but I need a minus 12, so that doesn't do it. 6 plus 6 would be a positive 12, so that's not it. Negative 6 plus a negative 6. Bingo! We found ourselves a winner. Negative 6 plus negative 6 is equal to a minus 12. Awesome! So here's what I've done. I have now found my two numbers. M and N. M is equal to a negative 6. N is equal to a negative 6, right? And that's why I like this method so much. Um, it allows you to see all of your options. And then all you have to do is just work your way down through the options until you find the option that also gives you the sum that you're looking for. So the table. You're looking for two numbers, M and N, that multiply to A times C, the leading coefficient times the constant, which for us was a 36. Then you're looking for the same two numbers, M and N, right, of the options that you just found. They need to also add together to give you B, which for us was a negative 12. Now, here's what you're going to do with it. We are now going to use those two numbers I just found to replace my BX, right? I'm going to replace it. So here we go. I'm going to have 4 x squared. I'm now going to replace my b of x with the two numbers that I just found. Make sure that you put x's with them, right? This b came with an x, so my new numbers must also come with x's. Minus 6x minus 6x. Keep the 9 plus 9 is equal to Zero. So now that I have found those two numbers, right, I use those two numbers to replace my original bx uh, in the quadratic that you were given to start the problem. Why do that? Why? What's, what's the point? Well, remember, when we first started this problem, we started by checking for a GCF, right? I was looking for a greatest common factor of 4x squared minus 12x and a 9. They didn't have a GCF. Now we do. Check this out. If I go ahead and group the first terms together and the last terms together, right? 4x squared minus 6x, yeah, those guys have a GCF, 2x, so pull it out. If I pull a 2x out of 4x squared, I would be left with a 2x. If I pull a 2x out of a negative 6x, I'd be left with minus 3. Minus 6x and a 9, what can I pull out of those guys? Well, the obvious choice is a 3, right? I can definitely pull out a 3. But I'm going to need to pull out more than that, right? Please notice that this negative, this 6x is negative, and I need it to be positive. So I'm going to have to pull out a negative as well. So not only am I pulling out a 3, I'm actually going to pull out a negative 3. When I pull out that negative 3, What's that lead me with? Well, negative divided by a negative is a negative. Um, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and so I'm left with a positive 2x. Right? Pull a negative 3 out of a positive 9. Well, positive 9 divided by negative 3 is a minus 3. Guys, here's what you need. You need these guys. What's inside the parentheses must be the same. Has to be the same. I need a, if I have a 2x minus 3 in the first one, I need a 2x minus 3 in the second one as well. As long as those are the same, 
you did it right. If these ever come out not to be the same, you're going to want to go back and try either pulling out a different GCF, right? pull out a different GCF, or you may have just mixed up your terms, right? Instead of doing M and then N, switch the M and N, do N, then M, regroup, pull out a GCF, and then right, one of those is going to work. Either M, then N, or N, and then M. Right, Grouping and factoring, you're going to wind up with the exact same quantity inside of the parentheses. Now, once I have done that, right, how do I write my final answer? It's actually very simple. You will take your GCFs. 2x was the GCF of the first um, uh, quantity. Minus 3 was the GCF of the second quantity. We're going to pull those guys out and write them as one of my factors. 2x minus 3. Right? So those are my GCFs. Right? My GCFs make my first factor. Then, what's left in the parentheses, this is why they have to be the same. What's inside the parentheses must be the same because what's inside those parentheses becomes your second factor factor. 2x minus 3 equal to 0. Well, since they're the same, 2x minus 3 and a 2x minus 3, I can rewrite that as 2x minus 3 squared is equal to 0. And if you guys remember back to when we started this problem, that is exactly what we got. Guys, thanks so much for taking a look at this um, uh, particular method with me uh, for solving a general trinomial. I got a few more example problems to do with you guys, so head on over to the next problem and I'll meet you guys there.